0554 imagine Thank you for being part of us. This is Y254 News Highlights. We are now bringing the report on uh, reality of Africa where uh, Africa remains at the center of many development programs and financing instruments. South of the Sahara is the region receiving most ODA with 22% of total overseas development assistance. Uh, on average of 2016 to 2017, it is the continent with the highest ODA a country to per capital. Now it is also the continent where the challenges for the uh, for the achievement of the sustainable development goals SDGs remains the biggest and the and the impact of migration is greatly felt. Efforts towards achieving these SDGs should not only provide a stronger uh, safety net for people's survival, but also provide an en enabling environment where they can participate in how the world is created and distributed. Here is a report. The Reality of Aid Africa Network held a four-day conference in Kenya to deliberate and consolidate key priorities for Africa on financing for development in preparation for the five-year review of the Addis Ababa Agenda for Action. Among the contemporary issues to be addressed included providing an African CSO's input in the fifth-year review of the United Nations Financing for Development Outcomes documents, strategies on consolidating Africa's CSO's participation, and voice on the 2020 United Nations for financing for development and identifying explicit strategic positions that Africa sees those will champion for proper integration in enhancing financing Africa for development. African context for financing sustainable development is continuously reshaped by ever more rapid shifts in geopolitics, technology, climate and other factors. At the same time, Africa's domestic policies, institutional frameworks and global economic governance continue to struggle to keep pace with the evolving nature of these global challenges. In marking the fifth anniversary since the adoption of the Addis Ababa Agenda for Action and Sustainable Development Goals, Africa needs to take time to review its approach towards its global obligations in the achievement of the SDGs as well as the quality and availability of financial resources for the achievements. While officially opening the conference, Leah Takpu, the chairman reality of Aid Africa Network, said that Africa needs to protect her natural resources and called on all leaders to provide enabling environment for boosting domestic economy. It needs to carefully manage its natural resources by preventing external power from exploiting its resources. Also, our leaders need to focus more on creating the needed enabling environment for boosting our domestic economy, enhancing private trade, which is key to sustainable development. And lastly, working out the development agenda that works for the people. Rwanda and a few other African nations are already on the way and there are lots of lessons to learn from the post conflict country. I thank you for your kind attention. And I declare this meeting formal and open. Thank you. While international trade remains a key engine for economic growth, development and poverty reduction, it has remained stuttering for most African countries. Africa has not benefited from high commodity prices and the escalating trade wars among major global players, pushing up prices for essential intermediary goods and services required for our economic growth, while at the same time, slowing trade growth in the near future. I'm reminded of my own country where that is getting towards uh, almost uh, physical uh, sort of activism. Speaking to Y254 TV, the leaders in this year's conference showed concern on financing Africa development agendas. Vitalis Major, who is the executive director of Reality of Africa Network, said that financing is a very important component for financing Africa development agenda, but it's equally important to examine the finances that come in and how they are used. As you know, uh, development financing is a very important component of Africa's development agenda. And uh, this week we'll be examining the quality and the quantity of resources that flow into Africa 
to enhance its development and also how African governments themselves are mobilizing resources to finance themselves but lastly to look at what um, proportion of development uh, finances uh, are coming into Africa vis-a-vis -vis the actual allocation of Africa's government um, uh, in terms of resources to finance their own development. And we want to have that discussion and inform, form an informed opinion to also continue advising African governments on the need to strengthen their own efforts to indeed fund their own budgets that go towards development uh, uh, projects. He further said corruption is a global phenomenon and it's a responsibility of us all to end the menace. Well, our view actually is also to discuss the issue of if illicit financial flows. Uh, that is uh, resources that are mobilized in an illegal way that leave the continent but also those that facilitate legal or corrupt activities in Africa. As you know, part of the illicit financial trade, uh, illicit financial flows, 5% uh, of that is actually uh, out of corruption, uh, in the, based on corruption in the continent. And uh, while we recognize that indeed uh, there is a part of the blame that falls squarely on the governance and the leadership of Africa, there is also a big responsibility that should be allocated to uh, the international community because they are the ones, their systems, their private sector, the ones enabling corruption to happen. And some look away uh, when they are uh, confronted with their mishappenings, with their uh, foreign policies that propagate corruption in Africa. And so it is really time to have a discussion on responsibilities and duties on addressing this scourge. Uh, even if Africa cleaned its house and the international community did not clean their house, the problem will still exist. So this is really a global from phenomena that we must uh, uh, find a way of addressing because the impact of that is, uh, particularly for Africa, is big, uh, given the development challenges that we face, but also given that we really don't have a lot of resources to play around with. So if the little resources we have uh, goes into the drain, uh, into selfish pros uh, uh, pockets, it becomes a bit problematic to finance development. And that's why I think um, indeed corruption must be one of those things that we tackle before we get good quality financing for development. In addition, Mija argued that issues with corruption is not really about the agencies to fight graft, but rather a mindset where even the public should exercise their mandate on demanding accountability. Really, I don't think it's really, corruption is not really an institutional issue alone. So it's not about having the EACC, it's not about having the law, it's not just about having the presidents talk about it. It's really a change in mindset and having the citizens to demand accountability. Not because the institutions demand it, but the citizens themselves, who are the real taxpayers, having a conversation. So we as civil society, what we do is really to, to mobilize the citizen and raise awareness on what are their responsibilities vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, development expenditures of the government, but also in terms of just demanding transparency and accountability on resourcing. So um, I, I feel that the, the anti-corruption commissions of this continent, I feel that uh, the legal framework of this continent have not been socialized enough uh, to really be able to tackle the issue of corruption uh, wholly. Uh, I feel, I think that uh, what we're experiencing is happening because the citizens have been disengaged, uh, are not fully engaged in the process. And the only way, and you've seen, when citizens raise their voices uh, strongly, uh, people react, the institutions respond. And I think that we want to uh, continue strengthening that energy among the citizens to demand more accountability and not really focus on the institutions themselves because we know each other, we sit in the bedrooms, we know what to say, after that nothing happens and that's what we are trying to change now. Eugene Rimbasira, the RDO Rwanda reiterated on the need of African governments to utilize the natural resources and practice good governance, adding that Africa has the capacity to fund its projects.
It has the capacity to develop its financial agenda, uh, development agenda rather, uh, because it has resources, it has the capacity, but we don't employ the resources rightly. Uh, right now, our portion of trade internationally is 3%. That means we are contributing 3% of the ideas in the global development. So it's only when we, we can increase our voice on international trade agenda that we can be meaningful partners in development. Right now we are using uh, foreign money, yet development is for our own people. So how do we generate resources from our own uh, sources such that we compete favorably? Otherwise, you can't be equal players when we are we are getting more than thirty percent, more than seventy percent of aid of aid that we commit to our development. Further, he encouraged other African countries and indeed the whole of Africa to increase on exports and minimize on imports, as in the case of Rwanda nation. What I wanted to, to share with you about Rwanda, we are using aid to build our own capacity to generate our own resources. Right now, we've. Uh, we are financing our own budget by close to 70 percent, uh, up from 40 percent 10 years ago, and we are trying to increase our exports, reduce on the imports by substituting made from Rwanda products that we want to promote uh, on the international market. Secondly, we want to promote a uh, knowledge-based economy, whereby Rwanda doesn't have a lot of resources, but we have, we want to develop the human capital. It is from this one that we can generate uh, resources to, to, to finance our development. And my message to the East African government would be that let's promote good governance, Let's have the interests of our people. Let's listen to our people. Let's make use of the vote that we got from our people to work in the interests of our people. Liu Atakpu, the chairman of the Reality of Africa Network, said that most of the African nations have continued to rely on foreign financial aid, yet they are in a position to fund them. Africa has been, over the years, depending on aid in ways and manners that they believe that without foreign aid, they cannot do anything in Africa. We cannot do anything in Africa. Leo pointed out that illicit finance, corruption and bad governance has to blame for Africa's host to development. In the past 50 years, Africa has received over 1 million, 1 trillion dollar in foreign aid to various countries to finance various development programs. Mm -hmm. But if you travel across Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, you find out that the one trillion US dollar that has entered Africa is not equal to the development you find in Africa. So what could be responsible for that? He said that it's time Africa realized its potential and stop relying on foreign aid as they come with vested interests. Africa needs to look inwards. We need to develop our own resources. We need to prevent foreign interests from removing our resources in Africa. We need to develop our own resources and use those resources to develop our people. We need to improve governance in Africa. We need to improve enabling environment. We need to also um, provide infrastructure. Yeah? Electricity, water and roads, railways should be working in Africa. And that way, We'll be able to attract foreign direct investments. We should be able to attract even local investors. And then our banking system, the high interest rates, our banking policies need to be reviewed across Africa. Investors should be able to access capital within our banking system to finance uh, their businesses. Right? If you have the infrastructure and then the capital is there, people can afford to take risks. But a situation where you are looking at uh, 20 to 24 percent, 25 percent in some countries, you know, interest rates for commercial bank uh, loans, that in itself will not help growth and development. 
Illicit financial flows represent a major obstacle to the mobilization of domestic resources for sustainable development for many African countries. While such flows are difficult to quantify, in its inaugural report in 2017, the Interagency Task Force on Financing for Africa Development mapped out three areas, corruption, crime and tax-related illicit financial flows, and recommended component-by-component component and channel-by-channel channel estimation analysis, and most importantly, policy recommendation. The foregoing and other trends illustrate the need for policy action to address new and existing challenges to financing the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. Financing and development review of Addis Ababa agenda for action and present a good opportunity of African CSO's voices to be heard. It is thus incumbent on us to develop clear position and policy recommendations for our future engagement with not only African governments but also the global CSO's actors. With Kenya being placed at position 4 in donor funding, the message that is coming out clearly here is that the African government should realize the prosperity of our nations is on our hands and not from the donor funded projects. For I254 TV, I'm Dereva Hillary. In reality, there you have it. Uh, the prosperity of our nation is not in the foreign aid, but is in our hands. Thank you so much for keeping us company. This has been Y254 News Highlights. Coming up next is Y Mashariki. Keep it up. Keep it tuned to Y254. DJ TSK and Ken Relbis will be here for you. I'll be seeing you again next week. Until then, have yourself a very good night. My name is Dereva Hilary. Goodbye.